My name is Andrea. I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Catholic Charities Center for Immigration, Legal and Support Services. One of the main programs that I spearhead here at Catholic Charities is our DACA program. And so um, around, I think, at the end of spring, we had heard some whispers in the legal community that DACA was going to be decided on soon. And of course, we have a very large percentage of our clients that are DACA or just more people that we work with every day that are DACA. And so on the Saturday before Easter, I got a phone call from my boss saying they're going to decide next week. And so we frantically worked up a plan. And so that week leading after Easter, we were working crazy hours to try to get our DACA clients, uh, their DACA renewal progress um, and just get things done. And so at the end of the week, we were able to do about 80 DACAs. And by this time, if you've done any legal processes you know this work is a lot of a lot of preparing a lot of talking to our clients and it's very exhausting especially when you're just getting used to working from home during quarantine and so I get a phone call late on Tuesday on like six seven o'clock since I knew it might have been a client I answered and it was actually Maria um, a young nurse who was working in an emergency room and she deeply apologized for calling me after hours but said I heard from a friend that you guys were helping with DACA and I'm really scared my DACA is going to expire my supervisors asking for my DACA renewal and I haven't even started. I've been so busy in the emergency room helping clients, trying to figure out what's going on with COVID that I hadn't even thought about myself. And so I, we were done with our DACA applications. We already had more than enough clients, but I said, you know, she's out there risking her life for us. The least I can do is put in some extra time to help her. So in talking to her, she told me a little bit about her story and how her experiences as a young woman informed her decision to be a nurse and how being a DACA recipient had really affected the way in which she treated her patients and the way in which she saw herself. And she explained that it was very hard to get to school as a DACA recipient every two years trying to figure out how am I going to pay for this as a student. And so she really appreciated what we were doing for our clients covering the filing fee of 495 as well as doing the renewal completely free. She told me that in the past she had paid up to $1,200 for this renewal from an attorney, a private attorney. And this time around due to COVID and everything that's going on, her parents being laid off, she just couldn't afford it. And so it really Really touched me because as a DACA recipient myself and as a daughter of immigrants, I know what it's like to worry about your future, to worry about what will happen to DACA in two years. And so her story really touched me because she was a frontline worker and she was over there caring about other people more than she was caring about herself. But at this point, DACA also reminded her that, you know, you have to think about your immigration status. And so as a DACA recipient, that's something that always informs the work that I do. It informs the way that I interact with my clients, seeing in them the fear of what can happen, seeing in them the worry about paying for their fees. And so I think that's what makes the work that we do very important. And that's what helps me get up to work every day is being able to help our clients with services that they otherwise might not be able to afford. And so in my role as community engagement manager, I think more than ever, it's important to have resources and to bring this information to our community, because just like there are people out there who are ready to take advantage of our community, there are also people like us who are ready to serve our community and who want to bring these services to everybody, regardless of their immigration status and regardless of how much technology they know or they have. And to close off, I would like to say thank you to the sponsors and to the people who support Catholic Charities. All the work that our team does and the work that we do with our community would not be possible without your help. Thank you.